Hey, <clears throat> this is a very unusual video, hopefully the first in a small series, where I basically show you my models. It's Armies on Parade, and I will start with what made this channel my Brits. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to show you all my Brits. I've got them all out on parade here, standing in front of me. And it's going to be a little chunky because I'm recording this on my uh, my laptop, right? Uh, so I am going to have to move you about a bit. Sorry about that in advance. All right, here we go. Here you go. These are the my collection of armored fighting vehicles for the Brits. Um, so I'm going to start over here. This is a World War One tank. It's a, I uh, can't remember, Mark something. Um, Mail, I think. Um, it was the land ships of World War One, right? It's a really wonderful model. It's very, very heavy. It's uh, resin with metal bits, um, like the guns here are metal. And <clears throat> this is not actually my own. This uh, belongs to my son, who, when I started Bold Action, he was like, ooh, ooh, and you can take World War I tanks. And I was like, uh, can you? And he was like, yeah, and I want one. And then he bought this, and he left it here, and he's he's never painted it. Uh, and at some point, I think I might just finish it up. And I know that there's like one theater selector where you can bring this tank. So I might just finish it up and, you know, field it once or twice. Um, but the, the vehicles here that have clearly seen the most combat, which you can actually see from how battered they are, are my stewards here. These were bought together. Um, they were a pack of stewards from all of games, so three stewards in in one go. And I've, uh, when I got them, I started playing around with stewards. Um, I used them as steward reckies, so I actually have um, Perry miniatures with machine guns that are magnetized, so they go down here, and the steward becomes a recce, or I can take them out, mount the uh, turret and I have a regular steward. So these have seen so much combat and have like a bunch of stuff have broken off. They used to have antennas, all of them. This one still has an antenna with a flag on it, but this is like the fourth antenna that's gone on this. They also used to have pintle mounted machine guns. These have broken off several times um, just because when you use them in tournaments and and these have been used non-stop. They've been to several WTCs, um, both together and separately. So, so they've been used quite a lot, as have my Jeeps. These three Jeeps were also bought together and assembled together with... Um, I've made them up with little, uh, like, SAS, long-range desert group guys driving them. And they are magnetized so that the machine guns can actually, you know, get moved around because I have been using these as uh, airborne recce jeeps. They've got the double uh, medium machine gun uh, here mounted at the front. Nobody have ever complained about uh, airborne jeeps being in the desert uh, in uh, long range desert colors. Um, so they've, they've also seen quite a lot of use and have been broken up several times and reassembled and yeah. Then, more recently, I got all of these bicycles, uh, early war motorcycles, uh, 3D printed. These are also magnetized so that the Bren guns can be removed and put on. I did this because at some point, you know, they might change up the rules. I might, you know, change up my opinion and, and want a different armament on the uh, bikes. So it's nice not to be locked down and have to destroy your model or buy a new one. <clears throat> There's even uh, this little bike here, which is a solo bike that um, is actually a, a toy bike from a model kit that, that's made in Denmark here in the 1960s. At some point, this is also going to be painted up as a courier or something. I, I don't, I'm not sure, but it, it's now part of my collection here. Um, you'll see as we go along that I have quite a lot of old toys um, in my collection of vehicles. 
for instance, these two are also all toys. It's a thing. It's uh, like I go to flea markets and, and I browse around and find all toys and convert them a bit. And there we go. So this one, for instance, very nice Daimler Dingo has actually been fielded at least once. Um, it's a um, it's a Corgi um, toy car and uh, it's perfectly scaled for bolt action as well. And I just converted it a bit, put on a few more bits and bobs and it's my Daimler Dingo. This has also been knocked about quite a bit. Um, the movable wheels are not helping with that because it moves every time I transport it, right? Um, it's eight plus armor. It's only got an LMG, but it's eight plus armor open topped. Daimler Dingoes, they're a thing. I've actually got two of them because, you know, at one point I've, I stumbled across another and I was like, yeah, I'll take one more. Um, still on the painting table, hasn't really been used yet, but these next two, they have, these are RKX um, stack hounds and you can see I've used them so much that the paint has actually chipped off on, on some of these. They're really nice models, heavy, chunky, they are bigger than the, um, the stewards and they are absolutely deadly. They are a tank on wheels and work really well in combination with other um, tanks. The only thing is that they are, of course, in competition for points, points for value with the motorcycles and the airborne wrecky jeeps. So as such, yeah, mm, sometimes they get left home, but sometimes I take them just because I want an extra tank. Um, they do have the option because they have um, an anti-tank gun of actually shooting at enemy armor, which is something that you quite often lack in British armies, right? You, you quite often miss the anti-armor. Then this is my recent um, <clears throat> paint line here. Um, most of these are like these two are um, prizes that I won at tournaments. So I got a Wolverine here, which I was like, I'm never going to use that. Maybe there's there, there's like one tank war tournament coming up. I may use it at that. Um, but that's that's the only place I'm, I'm ever going to use it. But now I have the model. And the rules might change. Version 3 might change everything up. Um, and then, you know, it might be the new hotness. So I may use it there. Um, so this is being painted. Uh, Warlord Games, by the way. And then another RKX. Um, this is my Churchill Avra. Really lovely model. Again, very heavy. Um, 3D print resin, I think. Um, and it's it's a really nice model. I actually have it where I could have put uh, like um, extra bits on it because it was it's one of Hobart's funnies. So it could have like a, a huge roll of bundle up um, faggots. So to to throw in a ditch or something that so it could drive over it. I've seen people use these that has a like a bridge on them. Um, I just want mine to be just the tank because. I'm never going to use the other bits. They look cool, but I'm never going to use them. So, um, yeah. That is my Churchill Abra. Again, this might come out in the tank wall later this summer here in Denmark. Final one, and that is actually competitive. This was um, inspired by uh, Alistair Unicom, who figured out that the uh, Crusader AA was actually quite good next to Stuart's. Because the Stuart is really good anti-infantry. The Crusader AA with the double light autocannon is really good at hunting enemy Stuarts and light armor. So um, so this is something that I actually got for myself. This is a Rubicon kit. Um, really lovely kit. And I am assembling this because I might need this competitively um, in, in certain packs. Yeah. So that is my armored fighting vehicles. Now I'm going to take you on and we shall talk about my collection of um, transports. Just a sec here. I will try gently moving you guys without destroying everything. I, think, I hope we can see that. Right, we can. So here are my transports. 
Um, this is my transport section. The first transport I actually got was these three guys. They are 3D printed. I added um, some drivers for them, which I was lucky enough to, to be able to fit into the driving seat. Um, the 3D prints are atrociously bad, but I didn't care at that point. I just needed the trucks. These have been with me to WTC in Poland. This was where I started playing my um, my Gurkhas. I had them in these uh, 30 CVT trucks um, and they have seen a lot of combat. They're, the main attraction of these is that they're fairly big so they could easily block roads and lines of sight and just like become a fortress. The next bit I got was these four um, 15 CVT trucks, also 3D prints. These I painted up a little nicer with the window shields being a little bit... I, I took a little more time with these. Um, again, the 3D prints are not very good, but again, they're just transports for my competitive armies. So the paint job, I didn't really fuss a lot about those. Um, but they are painted and they have seen quite a lot of combat. But as I was playing these, I actually started not using transports, uh, even though these are perfect size, like they're eight man transport capacity on a 15 CVT, perfectly for my Gurkhas. But I started stop it. I stopped uh, using transports for them. Instead, I got into armored transport for a while. Um, so I got myself a Bren carrier. This is my rather lovely Bren carrier with uh, SAS Desert theme. So there's like a guy in, in an Arab scarf driving it and there's an SAS in his navy blues um, shooting his rifle and yeah. So I've added all kinds of different stuff to this to make it look a little bit more like desert uh, SAS. I don't, I don't think they ever drove a Bren carrier, but it fits in nicely with the theme. And then famously my LVT, which is atrociously knocked about right now. It's practically destroyed it has bits that has fallen off and it's now lacking one of its machine guns but the lvt i picked up on a whim i looked through it and i actually did a video on this back when i got it the first time um i picked it up at a price table um at a tournament and i was like okay i'll take that i don't know anything about it and then i figured out well you can do 30 man transport capacity which is kind of interesting when you're doing tank platoons um so i i assembled it and painted it up and did a video on why i thought perhaps that there was something and um and i took it to several tournaments and i actually won world open war using an lvt not that the lvt was the most important bit but it was there and it definitely did its job um so this is my LVT. It's been magnetized so that the Poulsen gun can come off. The um, machine guns can have different positions where they were in real life. So they're all magnetized, can go around. I love my LVT. It's been on the tabletop with me so many times. It's died so many times, mostly to indirect fire by medium mortars. But yeah, well. Um, I also have a large collection of toy cars for uh, for uh, my Brits here. I have, uh, you can see, like I've got four Jeeps. This one is a Corgi Junior's Willys Jeep, um, and it's perfectly scaled to the smaller Jeeps from All of Games and Rubicon, but it's a little smaller than these, which are Dinky Toy Jeeps, um, which is a little larger in scale, but not noticeable uh, if they're on the table. It's just if you put them right next to each other, you can see that there's a little scale difference. All of these I picked up in flea markets and just gave them a spray paint of green. Um, at some point, I'll, I'll finish off the paint job, but they're really useful to have because Jeeps, you always need more Jeeps. And at some point I might, you know, build a whole SAS desert Jeep army. This is also a dinky toy, um, which I actually think it's a, um, a truck that's post-war, but people don't complain. And it's, it's like almost perfect 
size for the 30 CVTs. It's it's just it works really well as an extra truck. I've even put a magnet in if I wanted to have a pencil mounted uh, gun. I could just click that in. Final toy car I have is this one, which is a field tractor by Dinky uh, and Meccano. Again, perfectly scaled. It's still on the painting table. Um, so this was quite often used for for artillery, hauling artillery, and and that's what mine is going to do as well. And it it actually fits rather nicely with the um, the trailer for my twenty five pounder, which is this one, which can just hang at the back here. Final thing that I recently got was this one, which is a kangaroo, uh, a ram or. Yeah, a ram kangaroo, um, which is a Canadian invention, I guess. Uh, they would like pull out all the in inner bits of a tank and pull off the turret and then just stuff men in there as a, a form of armored transport for old, outdated tanks. I have absolutely no idea what tank this originally was. But it is now a ram kangaroo, um, and that's what it was sold as, I guess. This I got in a uh, mystery box, um, and that is going to go into my collection. I have no idea when I'll use it, but a 9 plus um, transport, well, it might be useful at some point. So that is my transport section for the Brits. A bit of everything, as you can see. Um, although I think perhaps at some point I may need more Bren carriers. Um, slightly unusual only having one, I know. Right, I'm going to move us on to my support section then. Gently, gently. And here we go for the support section. Right. So, um, I'll start you with uh, my artillery, which is most of it of slightly newer date. So, um, when I started playing my Brits, I, I really did not think I needed any artillery. Um, I, I it, it just didn't fit my playstyle. I was mechanized. I, I was movable and... And it's only recently that I, I have expanded my collection to include um, three artillery pieces. The first one here was a prize at a tournament. I've never actually used it in combat, in anger, in for real life. This is a six pounder, um, a six pounder um, anti tank gun, which is not useful at all for competitive bold action. But I did paint it up really nicely because it was a prize and I wanted to do something. So so the crew is all pair of miniatures that I slightly converted and they work really well together with the six pounder. And um and they were my first like where I actually cared about painting any of my Brits because normally I, I really don't I don't care about because it's just a competitive army they're going to get knocked about no matter what but this one wasn't because it wasn't going to be fielded so I painted it up nicely I also got myself recently a Rubicon 25 pounder a lovely lovely kit oh my god was it difficult to assemble there were so many small fiddly bits so many small fiddly bits and I actually even have the gunner here magnetized, which was a nice little addition. I wanted that to happen because I wanted maybe to be able to take him off as a casualty at some point. Um, the crew are, of course, because they're Rubicon, they're slightly slimmer than Warlord games, but they fit in rather nicely with my Perry miniatures. Like, the difference is not noticeable there. So, yeah. So I got that kit um, just because I felt like the, the 25-pounder is the second best uh, artillery piece in the British roster. The best one being this one. Um, but, but uh, and this is my land mattress. It's 
not always available in generic reinforced platoons. But I did take some time with painting this one as well, mostly with the crew, which I'm fairly proud of. This is 3D printed, by the way. RKX um, 3D prints. They are the Canadians. Very, very lovely models. Very lovely um, sculpting. And they don't look at all like Desert Brit, so I had to paint them up in the colors so they wouldn't stand out too much uh, next to my other Desert Brits here. Um, because these are Northwestern Europe Canadians. Uh, they don't really belong in the desert at all. But while I was getting this kit 3D printed, I also got myself a medium mortar. Again, RKX Canadians. And I took some time painting these as well. They turned out lovely. I'm very, very happy with these kits. Um, and this medium mortar has been on the table several times. It hasn't really worked out for me. It, it rarely hits anything. Um, so like at World Open War, as I remember it, um, I, I, I fought with this during six games and it didn't hit once. Not a single time did it kill anything. So, but it was there. Um, it did try. Uh, it just didn't work out. The rest of my small teams are all made from Perry miniatures. So I have here a light mortar um, with a movable uh, loader so that I can remove him as casualties. I have a light machine gun, movable loader. I have a, a anti-tank rifle, which has broken off, removable loader. I have a sniper, removable spotter. Um, I really like that setup with with uh, two miniatures on a base, one of them being removable. Um, and then I have this line here, which um, of, of these I'm mostly proud of my flamethrowers. Again, they are Perry miniatures, which I just, I sculpted a, uh, a small backpack for them, a British flamethrower backpack and just kit bashed and, um, and made these with a little bit of wire and some round shapes. These have also followed me for quite a while. The same can be said for my Pia, which again is made with a pair miniature, uh, the arm and shoulder rest of a, um, an anti-tank rifle, boys anti-tank rifle. And then the pia was made handcrafted. Um, I also have these. These two are like um, not used at all. I, I don't think I've ever had them on the table. These are my LMGs. I assembled them because I had a few bodies left over, but they have been, um, shall we say, less than useful. Um, I haven't used them not once. Um, because LMGs are just not worth it. Over here, I have my uh, officers. I have assembled four officers, uh, three of them, these guys here, with binoculars. This one has been my go-to forward artillery observer. He has a set of binoculars and an SMG. He has been with me every single game my Brits have played. He's just been brilliant. Uh, he doesn't always work out, but definitely worth it. Um, and this officer has been my lieutenant for so many games. You can see his hand has broken off. His SMG has broken. He's been fighting nonstop for years for me and won so many games. He's, he's been dropped on the floor. He's been stepped on. Um, he's still here. I uh, love my little lieutenant. The final row I want to point your attention to is this row here of, these are not Perry miniatures. I can't remember where I got these from. These are metal miniatures and they're just, they're like civilians or like non-standard uniformed guys. This is a pilot um, that I am using as when I need somebody who, who stands out a bit. So I might need an NCO or an extra lieutenant or something. And these guys are it. They are my go-to for that. You can even see this 
Indiana Jones. Right. Let's take you on and show you my infantry, shall we? And this, I think, is going to be interesting because some people might be surprised at the composition of my infantry. Here we go. Right. This is all the infantry I have for my Brits. Um, so I have people armed with SMGs, people armed with rifles, my native regulars, and my Gurkhas. That is all that I've ever built of Brits. The uh, SMG armed dudes uh, mostly were for extra men for officers. Uh, that's where I started. That's how I like started the first few guys. I painted them up in the dark skin tones of all my guys here. By the way, every single one has dark skin tones. So that they could be Gurkhas, they could be Maoris, they could be um, colonial troops, Indians, whatever. Um, and then I painted up a bunch of Desert SAS as well, because I might want to field those. I have done um, in some games, fielded my SAS. Fanatic Tough Fighters, they're lovely, really lovely. Um, and these guys, I've kit bashed them so much, right? I, I took a bunch of American gear and kit bashed that in. Uh, they've got backpacks from whatever I felt like at the time. Um, so just so they look like non-standard, right? This guy, for instance, he has an SMG here, but he's got an American backpack. And I, I gave them different uniform colors as well, because I didn't want them to be uniform at all. So he has a dark shirt on, this guy. Right. Now, my riflemen. I have assembled two packs of Perry Miniatures Riflemen. Um, so I have 42 standard riflemen just with uh, helmets on. Because these guys, they, they can be anything in the British Army, basically. I uh, Many of them are by now broken, but I assembled quite a lot of them with, um, with the bayonets on their rifles. Um, just because I wanted them to be like they were in combat. Um, and and basically these guys have functioned as everything uh, in the British Army by now. They've been inexperienced dudes, they've been regular dudes, they've been veterans, they've been Gurkhas, they've been uh, Maoris, they've been Indians. At some point I was like, I need some of my dudes to look a little bit more Indian because I was playing with around with the Indian Free Squad. So I made a, a couple of rifle dudes and just gave them um, War Games Atlantic um, Afghan heads with turbans, which immediately made them stand out. They looked a lot more Indian with that bit of gear. Yet yeah, I know like close ups, they don't look like the Indian turbans at all, but uh, on a table, nobody has complained. And then I, to make it an Indian free squad, I just took a bunch of the guys with helmets and these four guys with their turbans. And then everyone knew they were the Indians because they could see the turbans. Um, so very, very useful. These 42 guys, they've been so useful to me over the years. And for a while, so were the, these guys. These are... Um, Perry Miniatures Mahadis Rebels um, from the Sudan range and I, for some of them I just like plunked down a couple of of random rifles. I think this is a German one um, that I've given to a couple of guys here just just to make them a little bit more modern but these guys have over the years been my native irregulars. Uh, there was one point where I was every single list I had, I might have Gurkhas, I might have something else, but native irregulars were in every single list I had. 
They were so good for a period. I won a tournament in Sweden using these guys. And then the fact came out and they became theater only and I haven't used them since. So they've been uh, delegated to the shelf life now. Uh, maybe they'll crop up in, in other games at times because they're just, they're very useful. I mean, the, the guys with spears, they would have been the same basically in Roman times. And the guys with rifles, they can still work for me as inexperienced uh, levy infantry of some sort. Um, but they were made to be East African um, native guides, or support troops, basically. Now, most people won't believe me when I say this, but these are all the Gurkhas I've ever made. There are nine guys with cookeries here. And that's the only difference. I, I assembled these as riflemen and just made sure I had a hand free and put a cookery in that hand. And that has and all that's marked out my Gurkhas. So what I'll typically do when I go to a tournament is I'll take a few of these and then a bunch of rifles and then that will be my Gurkha unit. And everybody can immediately see, because they can see the, the cookeries, that that is Gurkhas, right? Even though not all of them are holding cookeries, that is definitely Gurkhas. So these have also been atrociously treated because most of the cookeries have by now broken off. So they have been through so many tournaments and they've been on the floor, they've been stepped on, they've been dropped, they've been uh, broken up during transport. But the guy still holding the knives, very clearly a Gurkha. Now, the knives themselves are actually a little bit large, and that is because they're not actually cookeries, and they were not designed for pair of miniatures. These are swords from ancient Greek Victrix. So Victrix models, ancient Greeks, and they have these lovely little knife-like short swords um, that look so much like cookeries that people, at least from a difference, can't tell the difference. At, at least from a distance, can't tell the difference. So what I did was I had a bunch of these Greeks, which I was still am, painting up, building, uh, adding to my ancient armies. And I didn't, I wanted them to have spears, not swords. So I took all the swords and made cookeries out of them. Brilliant idea, best thing I've ever done. And that is, that's, that's it. That is my uh, Gurkhas. That's all the Gurkhas I've ever needed, even though I've quite often fielded whole armies of Gurkhas. So that was my armies on parade. That was my Brits. That's everything I have in my British collection. Some of it's still on the paint table, but that is everything, absolutely everything. So yeah, that is what you can get away with in in a collection some of it is just being added on like because i accidentally stumble across something that i i now have but uh, a lot of it is just assemble 40 riflemen and that is all you're going to need for a whole life of gaming that was it i'll see you for the next parade cheers